Hey guys, Chris from Adapt Tuition here, and this is video number two in my bank reconciliation statement series. If you missed the previous video on this topic and you want to take a look at it, I'm going to put a card up there and I'm going to put a link in the description below. In this video, I'm going to be talking about two new items in bank reconciliation statements that I didn't cover in my previous video. I'm going to be talking about NSF checks, also called bounce checks or return checks or dishonor checks, and I'm going to explain what those are when I get to that section of the video. Also, I'm going to be talking about how we deal with errors in the cash book and the bank statement. Anyhow guys, I don't want to do an intro that's super long, I actually just want to get to the work today. So let's go to it. Okay guys, so the first thing I want to talk about is something called an NSF check. Now NSF stands for not sufficient funds. Other names are dishonored checks, return checks, or the question can say the bank re returned a check marked refer to draw. So let me explain what this is. So why do we get into business? To make a profit. What's the very simple formula for profit? Revenues minus expenses. Now, how do we earn revenue? We earn revenue by providing goods or services. Now, let's say you provided a good or a service to one of your clients. Now, some clients might pay you in cash. Some might have a credit card or a debit card. They'll swipe in the machine and punch up their pin and the money transfers to you. Cool. Some might even use online banking and transfer directly from their account to your account. But there is another option, which was a, b a bit more popular some years ago, right? Let's call that check. So I'm pretty sure some of y'all or most of y'all might know what a check looks like. It's a little rectangular piece of paper and on it, there are some fields you fill out. So you put the, if you are paying someone, you put that person's name or the company's name. You put the amount of money in words and in figures, numbers, and they have to match. You also have to date the check and you have to sign it. Now, so let's say you provided a good or service to somebody and you've earned your revenue and they've paid you with a check. So first things first, you don't automatically get money because you have a check. You have to carry that check to the bank. When you carry it to the bank, you either go to the ATM and deposit it or you go to the counter by the teller and deposit it there. Now, not all checks, not, okay, when you do that, money doesn't automatically come to your account. Now, the thing is, I have to be careful how I say that because there are certain banks that will automatically credit your account, right? But traditionally, there's a period of at least three to five working days uh, until you get the money, even after you deposit the check, because there's this whole clearing procedure between uh, interbank clearance or interbank transfers, I think they call it. I should know, but I, I, it, it eludes me right now. Anyhow. So <laughs> the money takes time to go to your account. And on top of that, if the person gave you a check, let's say the check was made up for $2,000 and that person's account doesn't have enough to cover the amount of that check. Well, guess what? You're not going to get any money. What's going to happen is you're going to get back that check, right? Your bank is going is to give you a call, send you an email, send you a text, whatever it is, you're going to get in contact and say, hey, uh, we have a check for you to come here and collect, please. And you're like, okay. And you figure, hey, well, the bank paying me. Nobody. <laughs> the bank is not paying you. What happened is that check the person gave you, they, it could not be honored. Hence, they were dishonored check, right? Because there were not sufficient funds in the person's account. Hence, NSF check. And the check comes back to you. So like if I throw a ball and it bounces back to you, so the check just bounces back to you. So hence, the, the phrase, a bounced check. Cool. So... When you get back that check now, sometimes also stamped on it is the phrase refer to drawer. So when I say drawer, I'm not talking about like if you have like a, a, a chest of drawers in your house where you keep your socks and your, your drawers inside of there uh, or your clothes. No, not that kind of drawer. The, the person who gave you the check is referred to as the drawer. So the person who drew up the check. So yeah, anyhow. So when you get back that check now, you have to think to yourself, well, what do I have to do to my accounting record? Should I do anything? Well, think about it. When you got that check, you would have debited your bank account because bank is an asset. And if you get money, your asset is going up. And if your asset is increasing, you have to debit the asset account. So we have a debit in the account that didn't really happen. So what do you think we have to do to fix that? We have to kind of counterbalance it. As you guys know, we don't go and erase or cross a, or put a line through it or white it out or even delete it if you're using a, a software package. We have to leave it there and show what we call a, a counterbalancing entry or a canceling entry. All right. 
Uh, I kind of made up that phrase. I don't know if it's an actual canceling entry. I don't know, <laughs> right? But basically, that's what we do. We go on the credit side of the cash book and we make an entry there for the same amount as the check or checks that have been sent back to us, that have been stamped NSF, dishonored, or referred to draw. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take a look at how we, how we put that in the cash book. Okay, so we're seeing here new items, one NSF checks. So it says the cash book of Silenite showed a closing balance of 12,000. However, the bank statement showed a balance of 10,000. Okay, so the cash, book state, the cash book balance and the bank statement balance don't agree. So additional information, the bank returned the check stamped, sorry, the bank returned the check, we deposited stamped NSF. So we deposited the check and the bank sent it back. NSF means not sufficient funds, which means the person who gave you the check, their account against which that check was drawn, doesn't have enough money, not sufficient funds. So 2000. All right, so I explained all this stuff already. If you guys want, you could pause it and write down those notes, right? These are the actual notes from my hand that I use in my class, right? But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually split this screen and I'm gonna show you, if I could just manipulate that, that split. It's, it's kind of hard sometimes, <laughs> right? So as you can see, it says the required adjustment, right? So the bank statement will not require any adjustment, but we must adjust our cash flow downward. So I just said why. So what's gonna happen? So we, we have this balance um, in our bank account, our, our cash book, sorry, of 12,000. But the bank sent back this check for 2,000. So once again, we have to kind of unrecord <laughs> the, the receipt, okay? So we go on the opposite side of the account and we put NSF check or NSF checks according to what it is, right, 2,000. And when we balance it off now, we'll get 10,000, and that actually matches with the bank balance, right? Hold on, sorry, one second, I'm trying to... Right, okay, cool, right. So we have this balance now agreeing with our bank statement balance. And some extra little notes down here that says, um, what, since the cash book balance is now equal to the bank statement balance, and there's no additional information, a bank reconciliation statement is not necessary, right? So I kept this, this particular example really simple. Of course, NSF checks are gonna to be tucked away in, um, in the, the larger question, okay? All right, so let me just um, shift around some stuff on my screen and I'm gonna come back and we're gonna go through errors in the cash book. All right, guys, so new items two errors in the cash book. So let's just go into the example. So it says that the cash book of Chris Mastry, or Chris Mastry, Right, shows a closing debit bank balance of 30,000, whereas the corresponding bank statement shows a credit balance of 33,000. So we have a difference between the cash book balance and the bank statement balance. Okay, no problems. What? Let's take a look at the additional information and see what's what. So additional information. The opening debit balance in the cash book was understated by 5,000. Hmm. What does that mean? understated let's let's focus on that word for a second right it was understated by five thousand dollars now understated is a word that means that it was too low it, the amount stated was under or below the actual amount that it should have been so what they're saying is that the bank balance at start the opening debit balance was too low by five thousand so how do we fix this so if a debit balance is too low we have to increase it if it's understated, that means it's too low, we have to increase it. How do we increase a debit balance? By putting that amount, the amount by which it is understated, on the debit side. So if you didn't put enough on the debit side, you put the amount you're supposed to put, or at least you put how much you're supposed to put to make up the difference between what you actually put and what it was supposed to be, right? So it, it was here, right? You put in how much of it was. It was, it was you were supposed to put in, let's say 10,000, and you put in five. So it was understated. So now if they put in the extra five, they carry it up to what it's supposed to be. Okay, so first thing first, we're gonna start by putting in the opening debit balance. We're gonna put that here. And then we're gonna put this figure here, right? Understated opening balance, right? Now there are different things you can call this. You can call it error, understated balance at start, all sorts of things. To me, that's not the most important thing. The most important thing is the side on which you put it because that will determine if you're doing the correct thing. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying the words aren't important, but don't get caught up with that just yet. Try to understand what went wrong and how do we fix it, okay? We'll, we'll figure out the words after. 
Now, let's take a look at the second item. So it says a check for 8,500 paid to a creditor was recorded in cash book as 5,800. So look at that. We paid somebody 8,500, but we recorded it as 5,800. So that's a difference of 2,700. And this is also an example of an understated item. Why is it understated? Well, think about it. Is 5,800 equal to 8,500? No. Is it higher than, equal to, or lower than? Well, we just said it's not equal to a little before, so we know that's not the right option. We know 5,800 is not more than 8,500, or at least I hope you know that. If you're doing 12, message me. <laughs> All right, I'll explain. So it's lower. So once again, if the amount put in to the account was lower than it should have been, that referred to as an understated, um, uh, an understatement, or an understated figure, or an undercast figure. All right. When I do my video on errors, we'll get back into more dealing with those terms a bit more. So what do we do? Well, we have to fix it. Great. Explain how we fix it. All right. So once again, if something is understated, we need to increase it. But what side? Are we going on the debit side? Are we going on the credit side? What are we doing? Well, what was the item? It was a check for 8,500 paid to a creditor paid to a creditor if it was paid that means that it is on it was, well the entry was put on the credit side so the credit side has an an entry that is understated so how do we fix that we go on the credit side and we put the extra amount to carry it up to what it was supposed to be so in this case that's the difference between the 8500 right and the actual amount we wrote in right so let's put that here so understated payment to credit of 2700 So once again, don't get caught up and, and, and don't let trying to figure out the words confuse you, okay? Try to understand what went wrong, how do I fix it? And like I said, just be simple in your words. Next, we have a dividend check was omitted from the cash book. Okay, so a dividend check is a receipt, it's money we are getting. So we made an investment in another company and we are a part owner, a shareholder, and they paid us dividends. So if they paid us dividends, we receive money that goes on the receipt side or the debit side. Remember, cash, well, the cash book records assets of cash and bank. We're speaking specifically about bank in this particular context. If we receive money into the bank, that's an increase. And to record an increase in an asset, you have to debit the asset account. Now, it was omitted. What does omitted mean? Omitted means that... It was not put in. So how do we fix that? You put it in. So we're going to go on the debit side. And we're going to put 2600 So omitted dividend check. 20, or you can just put dividends. Doesn't make a difference to me. And finally, we have a receipt from a debtor of 4500 was recorded as 6400 Ooh, okay. So a receipt. So we just said receipts go on the debit side. The receipt was for 4500 Right? It was for 4500 but we recorded it as 6400 So clearly, we, we debited too much. Now, this is the opposite of an, of an understatement. This is an overstatement, or, the, or you could also say the figure was overcast or overstated. So it's too high. So if something, when it was undercast, it was too low, we had to increase. Now, it's too much. It's overstated. So how do we fix that? Well, we have to decrease the figure. Now, we can't go on the debit side and put a negative figure or a brackets figure. But what do we do, therefore, if we have to counterbalance it? We have to go on the opposite side. We have to go on the credit side. And we put an entry for the difference, the amount by which it was overstated. So that's 1900 So we're going to go on this side, and we're going to put overstated receipt from debt 1900 Now, uh, so it's only those four items plus the opening balance. So what we're gonna do, let's um, see the totals here, right? So this is gonna be, yeah, 37, six. This side was only, hmm, what was that, 4,600. So now when we balance off, we're gonna get an adjusted cash book balance. And you can even put that down. So balance, wrote down, uh, 33,000. And would you look at that? It matches with the balance in the bank statement, which is pretty good, cool. All right, so that is how you deal with errors in the cash book. And I'm just going to take a little pause here, rearrange some stuff, and now we're going to talk about errors in the bank statement. 
All right, guys, so now we are gonna take a look at errors in the bank statement and what to do about them. So I didn't mention this before, but I know some of you are probably asking, well, how, why would there be errors in the cash book or the bank statement? Two major reasons, right? Um, well, there are more, but the two major, one, human error, right? Humans are usually part of this process of recording and we are all human and to err is human, as in to make mistakes is part of being human. Two, technological errors. So sometimes the software is a glitch or whatever the case is. And sometimes as well as incorrect source information. So if somebody gives you, an, 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 um, sorry, a document and the document has errors on it and you input those errors, well, that's document error. But who prepared the documents? Humans, or maybe it was automatically created by a machine. And maybe there was a glitch. So to me, it all comes down to either human human errors or technological errors. Okay, anyhow. So errors in the cash book were corrected in the updated cash book. And just by the way, don't think all this stuff we learned in the last video disappears, eh? They don't. I'm just focusing on the new stuff. Okay? So now any errors that we recognize in the bank statement, we will deal with those in our bank reconciliation statement. Let's take a read and see how we're going to deal with it. So on the top here, it says new items, three errors in the bank statement. So the cash book of Candy Cane shows a closing debit balance of 25,000. So the bank account usually has a debit balance in the cash book. All right. Whereas the corresponding bank statement balance, sorry, bank statement shows a credit balance of 22. Right. So the bank statements usually show, well, Remember, the debits and credits are opposite. If you're not sure why, like I said, go and check out the previous video. So a credit balance in the bank statement is equivalent to a debit balance in the cash book. So we notice again, there's a difference of 3,000 here. So let's take a look at the additional information to see what went wrong or what we have to fix. So it says the opening credit balance in the bank statement was overstated. Now we just meant that word a little while ago, right? So what does overstated mean? It means that the amount was too much. It was too high. How do we fix that? Well, once again, we don't control or affect the bank statement or affect changes in it really and truly. I mean, directly. All right. Um, so what we do is we make an adjustment or an entry rather in the bank reconciliation statement. So if the, if the bank balance is too high, what do we have to do to fix it? We have to bring it down. So that, that would be a deduction in the bank rec. So you know what, let's start, let's start doing this thing. So we're gonna start with the opening bank statement balance of 22, and we're gonna deduct this 1,000, right? Let's overstated credit balance at start. So pardon my abbreviations. In your stuff, please don't put abbreviations for your teachers or for CSEC, for your exams, okay? Don't do that. You make sure, well, usually on the exam paper, on the exam page, I give you sufficient room, unless you write really big, in which case, find a way to deal with it. <laughs> All right, I can't help you with that. Okay, next, sorry. Um, the bank credited our account in error. Okay, so remember in the bank statement, credits are increases and debits are decreases. So if the bank credited our account in error, now they didn't say what it was. It could be they put in somebody's check in our account instead. It could be they, they put the wrong figure. It was too high, it was too, whatever the case was. They didn't say what. So. Um, I put generic stuff here, so when you guys um, have questions, and we, I will do a, uh, another video on particular questions, um, but it's just to, once again, get your brain thinking, okay, did this error, was it an incorrect credit or an incorrect debit? Once you figure that out, you'll know how do you fix it. Okay, so once again, the bank credited our account in error, so what does that mean? They put, uh, they put money in our account that shouldn't have been there. So if it shouldn't be there, what do we have to do? We have to take it out. Once again, the bank will do that, but us now, for our record keeping purposes, our bank reconciliation purposes, we will make an adjustment or, um, an, an, yeah, an adjustment to take it out. And how do we do that? Via subtraction. All right, so we're gonna do that here. Boom, minus erroneous credit. Once again, don't worry too much with the words. You'll figure that out or you'll, yeah, like I said, you'll get the hang of it. What's, what I'm more concerned with is what you do with the figure. Now, once again, let me just jump in here and say, very important, some bank recs start with the updated cash book balance. I'm gonna cover that in my next video. So look for that either in the, um, the, the, um, the, the 
look for it either on my channel or look in the description. Sorry, that's the word. In the description below to find out if I did it and, and I put a link for it there. All right. Okay. And the last item, the bank debited our account in error. So once again, for, from our bank statement perspective, credits are increases, debits are decreases. So the bank may have charged us an error for whatever reason. So now, once again, they have to fix that on that end. For our record keeping purposes, our bank reconciliation purposes, what we do is we make an adjustment in the bank statement, bank rec statement, sorry, right, showing that we fix that error. Now, how do we fix it? So if they, if they took something out that they weren't supposed to take out, how do we fix that? We put it back. So we're going to add back that 7,000. All right, so we're going to go here. Boom. All right, and let's see if you do your arithmetic. You get 25. So 22 minus 1 is 21. Minus 3 is 18. 18 and 7 is 25. And look at that. It matches with this cash flow balance here. All right. And I guess you could read this one. So I, I designed the question, the example, in such a way that we didn't need to do both a cash, a, an updated cash book and a bank rec. I wanted, once again, to treat with them separately so you could focus on the new items and not have to worry about different, too many different things at the same time. Okay. So, ladies and gents, we have seen the new items. What we are going to take a look at now is an example combining all of the new items. Cool. Okay, so what we're going to do now is in this example, we're going to take all of the new items we just learned and do a full bank rec question with both an updated cash book and a bank reconciliation statement. So, first thing to do is to read your information. Don't forget that. Read and understand. Right. Now, once again, before I jump in, remember this topic was very troublesome for me when I was in Form 4, Form 5. I didn't know how to do it at all. I managed to skate through Form 4, 5, and 6, not doing any bank recs, got to university, and fortunately, the textbook was super easy to read, and I was able to understand. So if you guys are getting any trouble with this topic, please message me, right? or you can find me on Instagram at AdaptTuition, and you can message me there as well if you're having any trouble. Anyhow, so let's get into it. Sorry. So it says the cash book of Pawn Chakram showed a closing debit balance of 12,000. So once again, a debit balance is the usual type of balance in the cash book, the bank state, the, sorry, the bank account in the cash book, because assets usually have debit balances. As we saw in the previous video, and we might see in a later example in this, in this video, cash books can have credit balances in the bank column. We'll come back to that. Right. However, the bank statement showed a credit balance of 19,000. So, cash book has a debit balance, that's regular, positive balance. Bank statement has a credit balance, that's also a regular, positive balance. But they are different. The dollar amounts are different. One is 12,000, one is 19,000. So, as we know, the principle behind bank reconciliation statements is that we want to create symmetrical information. We want there to be symmetry in the information, as in, what is in the cash book, the information there is the same as in the bank statement and vice versa. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through the additional information items one by one and fix what we need to fix as we go along. Now some items here will apply to the cash book, some will apply to the bank rec. We're dealing with cash book items only first. So it says the opening, sorry, the opening cash book balance was overstated by 500. Okay, so actually first things first, Let's put in the cash book balance as it is, 12,000. So if the balance was overstated, what does overstated mean again? That means it is too high. If it is too high, how do we fix it? We have to bring it back down. We have to decrease it. How do we decrease a debit item? We go on the opposite side of the account, the credit side of the account, and we enter the amount by which it is too high. We enter the amount of the overstatement. So that is 500. So overstated opening balance, 500. So if we were to balance it now, it would come down by 500. This, this 12,000 figure would decrease by 500 and we would have negated or corrected the error of that opening cash book balance being overstated by 500. Next, a receipt from a debtor for 890 was recorded as 980. Okay, so we have a receipt being recorded and the figure is too high. So it was supposed to be 980, but we actually put, we wrote, sorry, it was supposed to be 890, but we actually wrote 980. So that's $90 too high. Now it says a receipt. All right, so a receipt means we received money. It would have gone on the debit side. 
if the amount put there is too high, that means it's also overstated, just like the initial, the first um, item in the additional information section, the one we just did before. So, and if it's overstated, that means it's too high. How do we fix something that is overstated? We have to decrease it. How do we decrease a debit entry? We put an entry on the opposite side, the credit side, for the amount of the overstatement, which in this case is $90. So overstated receipt, $90. All right, okay. Now, third item. So it says a payment of 610 to a creditor was omitted from the cash book. So a payment was omitted. So a payment goes on the credit side. If it was omitted, it wasn't put in. How do we fix that? We put it in. So we go on the credit side and we put 610. Once again, the words I'm writing here they're subject to change. I'm just putting the simplest thing for now, and then I might go back and re-explain what some other options are. Okay, um, next we have a check for commissions received was omitted 3,200. So this was a check for commissions received. So that's a receipt. And in this case, it was also omitted. Omitted means it wasn't put in. Now, if it's a, if it's a receipt, it goes on the debit side. And if we didn't put it in, how do we fix that? We put it in. So we're gonna go on the debit side. Oops, right. And we're gonna put in the 3200. Now, the other two items, it says the bank debited or credited our account in error. So those things are bank statement errors. We'll fix the bank, we'll fix those in the bank rec. Okay, so if we take a look at the, the figures in the columns here, we could clearly see the debit side as the larger total. So we're going to use that total on both sides and then we're going to find the difference between this set of figures and that. So it means the balance will be carried down from the credit side and brought down as per, well as a normal balance on the debit side. Sorry, I forgot. I didn't fill in that there. So I, was <laughs> I clicked the wrong thing. Okay, so... Um, we, now, we have now updated the cash book balance, but as you can see, it still doesn't match the 19,000 up here. How do we fix that? Well, we have two items that are bank statement errors. So we need to go and do a bank reconciliation statement. So I'm gonna leave that 14,000 up there to, to see if when we adjust the bank statement balance for the errors in the bank statement, if it matches back there. So the first thing I'm gonna put is I'm gonna put, um, whoops, what went on there, boy? Balance as per, ba oops, statement, right, 19,000. And it's credit, so that means it's a positive bank balance. So if the bank debited our account in error, it means they charged us an error. There's a decrease in the account that should not be there. How do we fix that? Well, we add back the amount they took out. Once again, this is a bank rec statement. It doesn't actually affect our bank account. The bank, that, that's their responsibility. Oh, wait, wait, what did I do? Okay, so I guess I put less erroneous credit first. Why did I do that? Right, whatever. Okay, so let me explain that. So clearly I didn't, um, <laughs> I didn't do my, my homework here. So if the bank credited our account in error by 8,000, that means, hey, that music real bugging me, Dread. <laughs> oh, I think you heard me. Thank you. Right, so a credit to our account by the bank would increase the amount of money in our bank account. If they put money that shouldn't be there in the account, that's wrong. The bank balance would be too high. How do we fix that? Well, we have to decrease it. Once again, we do have control over the bank account like that. They have to fix that error, but we will make an entry or adjustment in the bank rec to show the effect of fixing the error. So we're gonna take, we're gonna subtract that 8,000. And like I said, we're gonna add back that um, 3,000. Uh, let's see, 19 minus 8 is 11. 11 plus 3 is, ah, 14,000. And look, lo and behold, look at that, right? The balance in the cash book and the balance in the, well, it reconciled, right? We were able to transform this to the 14,000. Cool. All right, so it says no other info is given, therefore this is all that needs to be done. All right, so what I would like to do now is one more example. So thank you for following me this far, and let's get it now. Okay guys, so let's take a look at this example and it's gonna combine things from the previous video, which if you haven't looked at yet, be sure to check that out before you look at this. Otherwise, this stuff might make sense. All right, so it says the cash book of Jin Jabir 
shows a closing debit balance of 21.5. Okay, so once again, a debit balance is a regular balance in the cash book. So let, let's put that in. All right. Um, oh, right. Balance brought down <laughs> 21,500. Okay, cool. And the bank statement shows a balance of a closing credit balance of 15,000. So they're both positive balances, but they differ. So we have to one, update the cash book, and two, do a bank reconciliation statement to show that we know why the bank statement balance differs from the cash book balance. Okay, so let's take a look. So bank charges. So that is something in the bank statement that's missing from the cash book. Um, standing order for insurance. That's also in the bank statement missing from the cash book. That's, a, that's a, um, an automatic uh, so instruction that we give to the bank to make automatic payments on our behalf. Uh, direct credit transfers. That's money people send straight to us. Uh, interest credited by bank account. All right, cool. And then NSF checks. All right, and I think most of the other items might be bank record. We'll, we'll go through them, but let, let's, let's put in these things as we go along, shall we? Okay, so bank charges. So those are charges to our account. They'll decrease the balance. So we're going to put um, bank charges, 1,000. Okay. Then we have standing order for insurance. That's a payment that we instructed the bank to make on our behalf. So standing order insurance, oops, that's 3,000. Uh, then we have direct credit transfer. So a credit transfer to our bank account increases the account, which means we're gonna go on the debit side here, right? So credit transfers, 5,000. And then the interest credited by the bank, interest credited to bank account by bank. So the bank kind of rewards us for keeping our money with them. So that's gonna increase our balance again. So this is um, interest earned or interest revenue, I guess you could say, right? 2,000, right, so NSF check. Aha, NSF checks, we just learned about that. So those are checks that bounce back. We didn't, we, we received them previously, but we didn't actually get the money. So when we received them previously, we would have debited the cash book. But because we didn't get the money, we have to kind of unreceive or unrecord. So this is uh, what, NSF checks to the amount of 3,500, okay. Now, unpresented checks and bank lodgements, so you'll know from the previous video, go on the bank rec. Um, a receipt from the debtor was omitted from the, okay, we just learned about this. this, is an error in the cash book. So a receipt from a debtor will go on the debit side. It was omitted, so we have to put it in. So we'll put um, debtor, sorry, debtot. Come the man, Philip, be the self, right. Uh, Okay, how much was it? Uh, 6,000. Next, we have a payment to a creditor was entered as 3,000. So we were supposed to put 8,000, but we put three. So it was understated. The credit entry, if it's a payment, it goes on the credit side. So it was too low. So what's gonna have to happen is we are going to have to put um, um, understated payment to creditor. 5,000, right? Because if we were supposed to be 8,000 and we only put three, it's understated by 5,000. And then they said the bank debited our account in error. So that means that that's a bank rec item. Okay, so what's gonna happen? If we look on the debit side, it looks like we have more value here. So 21 and five is 26. 26 and eight is 34. So 34, 500 is the total. 34, 500 here as well. Now, this side, um, that's seven, that's 12, five. So I think 22,000 is gonna be the balance here. Balance carried down and balance brought down, right? So even if I made a, an, arithmetic, an arithmetic error, we'll see it, right? Things won't balance back and you'll know, hey, something went wrong, maybe with my calculations, right? Because I'm pretty sure everything here is on the right side. If not, well, tell me in the comments, right? <laughs> okay, so we're gonna go down, right? So balances per bank statement, 15,000. So we're gonna put that here. All right, next. So we said, unpresented, okay, so unpresented checks are checks we have paid to people, but the money hasn't come out of our account as yet. So our cash book would go down because we would have recorded the payment in the cash book. Our bank statement balance didn't go anywhere. So if you're starting your bank record with your bank statement balance, you're gonna minus unpresented checks. So less on, oh, sorry, all right, presented checks. And once again, there's no one right 
order for these things. Uh, bank lodgements. So bank lodgements are checks we have deposited but have not yet cleared. So we did not yet get the money. All right. So our cash book would have gone up because we would have recorded the receipt, but the bank statement didn't go anywhere. So we have to add it to show what would happen when the, the checks actually hit, right? So bank um, lodgements, 7,000. And we said the bank debited our account in error for 4,000. So a debit to our bank account by the bank would decrease the balance in the bank account. So they took money out of our account that shouldn't have been taken out. So we're going to add it back in the bank, right? So, so add, sorry. Add um, erroneous or incorrect erroneous debit. How much was it? 4,000. Okay, let's see. Let's see if we get to 22. So the positive 4 and negative will cancel. And 15 and 7 is 22,000. So balance as per updated cash book. Cool. Look at that, 22, right? Oops, we had some extra space here, boy. Right, so look, these two things match. 22,000 matches with 22,000. Cool. All right, I want to do one more example, and then we're going to end the video. Cool. Okay, guys, so last example, and I'm, I, I included an overdraft question here for you guys, because I know some of you all have a, a little <clears throat> trouble with the overdrafts. So once again, if you're not sure what an overdraft is, go back to the previous video, but I'll give you a very brief explanation. An overdraft is essentially a negative bank balance. How could we have a negative bank balance? You spend more money than you had in your account. How is that possible? You prearrange that with the bank. Remember, the bank wants to make money by making loans to its clients. And they charge interest on those loans. So the bank is very happy to lend you money once they think you can pay it back with interest. So an overdraft is a prearranged loan with the bank. So if you have 10,000 in your account and you need to spend 12 and your overdraft limit is more than that, then the bank will say, all right, go ahead and spend your money. We lend it to you. So what will happen is you'll have a negative bank balance. In the cash book, that is shown as a credit balance. Okay. So this here is the cash book of Miss L2, right? So it's a closing credit balance, an overdraft of 31.1. So let's put that in one time. So closing credit balance. So balance brought down. So some people have to put O slash D to signify it's an overdraft. The fact that it's on the credit side is, is enough to show anybody who is um, knowledgeable that it is an overdraft. But sometimes people like to be a little explicit, right? which is fine. Okay, so we're going to go through these things and put them in as we go along, right? Okay, standing order for loan repayment. So that is an automatic deduction from the bank statement. So the bank repays that loan on our behalf because we told them to. So if, when we get the bank statement, we'll see, hey, the money came out. Let's go and put that in the cash book, right? So, standing order, loan repayment, 11,000. Mm, that's a lot of money, boy. All right. Next, direct credit transfers to our account. So, credit, credit transfers to our bank account increase the balance. We won't know about them until we get the bank statement. Bank, the bank statement. So, um, right, so credit transfers. You can put direct credit transfers if you want. It doesn't make a difference to me. All right, uh, bank charges. So that's when the bank takes money from our account to compensate themselves for looking after our account. So that's going to decrease the balance in the account. So bank charges, 3,000. Um, you know what? I'm going to put this in extra space here in case I need it. I might not. All right, dividends credited to our account. So dividends, once again, when we invest in the shares of other companies, and if you don't know what shares are, I have a video on limited companies. You can check that card up there or a link in the description below if I remember to put it, right? Um, <clears throat> to see, to find out more about shares and dividends. So if it says credited to our account, it means the money went straight to our bank account. So we are, and it increased the balance because it's credited and we are now finding out about it because we just got the bank statement. So we are going to put that on the debit side of the cash book. So dividend revenue. Or just dividends is fine. 5,000. Okay. Checks returned by the bank marked insufficient funds. Right. So that's another way they can say NSF checks. So NSF stands for not sufficient funds. Or they could put dishonor check, refer to draw. Remember those things. So that's going to go on the credit side. Right. So NSF checks. Uh, 2,200. So remember, we put it on the credit side because when we got the checks, when we received the money, we would have debited the cash book. 
We send the check to the bank, the bank says, hey, this person don't have money to pay you. So we get back the check, the check bounces back. So now we have a debit entry in the cash book that we didn't really get any money for. So what we need to do, cancel it. Which means you go on the opposite side and you put an entry there, canceling the debit. Right, um, unpresented check has a bank rex, bank lodgements. Right, um, payment for rent expense was entered in the cash book as 2100. So we have a payment for 12 that was entered as 21. So the payment, which would be on the credit side, was overstated. So if it's overstated, it's too high. What do we need to do? We have to bring it down. Well, bring it down. Sorry. How do we do that? Well, we have to go on the opposite side and put an entry for the amount by which it was overstated. So that will cancel off the overstatement. So if we make a payment, we put it on the credit side of the cash book because payments decrease the cash book, the bank account, and decreases in assets go on the credit side of the account. So we're going to go here, we're going to put 900. That's the amount by which it was overstated. Uh, we're going to put um, overstated um, payment. Right? Now, something else you can put is suspense because that's what you would actually use if you're correcting this type of error. Once again, I have not yet done error correction videos, so I didn't put, well, that's what you should really use for a lot of the other entries, but we'll come back to that, okay? So that's that item there. Um, a receipt from a debtor was omitted. A receipt from a debtor goes on the debit side. What does omitted mean? It was left out. How do we fix that? We put it in. So we're going to go on the debit side. We're going to put 3400 okay? And in the next two items there, right, so nothing else is below that, so I could pull that back down, right. So the rest of the stuff goes in the bank, right. Okay, so, um, oh, sorry, um, debtor, right. I think that the credit side will still have the same total, I'm uh, sorry, a bigger total, so that's 42, 42 and 5 is 47, so 47, 300, so 47, 300, um, 47, 300 here, 2 and 5 is 7, Right, so that goes down to 40, and that goes down, uh, that's the 300, so that cancels. Um, 40, right, minus 4 is 36. All right, so balance carry down, O slash D, group. And you give a balance board down here. Sorry for mumbling, I now realize I'm kind of mumbling. Okay, um, let me double check that arithmetic. 36 and 3 is 39, 39 and 7 is 46. 46 plus 13 is 47 3. Okay, cool. So it's it is still in overdraft. So let's take a look at the bank rec. So we're gonna start with the overdraft balance of seven thousand. Now some people like to put the kind of pointy brackets, some people like to put a minus sign. Whatever you put is fine by me. Once in was a negative balance. Okay, um, so we said unpresented checks and bank lodgement. So unpresented checks, we will subtract them. Uh, because we're starting with the bank statement balance, right? So they will they will increase the overdraft. It'll get more negative. Bank lodgements are added. Add a bank bank, a Russian, right? Bank lodgements, <laughs> log lodgements, lodgements, right? That's thirteen thousand. Uh, and then these two incorrect items. So if the bank debited us an error, they took money out and it shouldn't have been taken out. So we have to add that back. All right, so add. Sorry. Incorrect debit. Debut. Anybody named Debut? And less incorrect uh, increase. Sorry, I'm rushing. <laughs> That's why. Yeah, 89,000. Okay. Right? Or, once again, if the bank credited us an error, that means they put money in our account when they should not have. Which means when we do the bank rec, we have to take it back out. Okay. So, minus 7, minus, minus 15, minus 2, minus 2 plus 53. 53 from this is, will give us, I think, 34, right? 33 or 36. Does it tie back? Yes, it ties back. There you go. So sorry, this is supposed to have brackets because it is still an overdraft. Right. Okay, cool. Whew. All right. Almost thought I wasn't balancing there for a second. <laughs> okay. Very short outro time. 
Woo. All right, guys. So that's it for uh, Bank Rex video number two, right? Again, if you didn't see video number one, check the description below for a link there. The next video, I will show you how to do Bank Rex starting with the updated cash flow balance. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. And until next time, remember, adapt. Because change is the only constant. All right, guys. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.